and the easiest way to manage a life question is to have um, a living entity that can give you direction so if somebody comes into this meeting and says should two people who are not married be having sex with each other because it was not clearly written that if you are not married to somebody or if you are two weeks to marriage you should not sleep with each other there's no place in scripture they say there are two weeks to marriage what i will ask you is because that question is organic you have an organic spirit inside you so there are questions that another man does not need to answer because you have the holy ghost those are the portions i didn't touch in the world of righteousness i just graced over it that if there's something going wrong in your generation god will give you a word and that lens that word will be a byproduct of the written word to say this thing is wrong for the first question the person said for example we have two people who are into ministry and cutting and then the person says that they don't have marriage in view my question is is there a new concept of cutting They have no marriage in view for now maybe in the next two to three years now my next question will be after the order of my lord how do believers who are not in ministry survive emotional temptation because we are trying to make it look like the demands in managing emotional temptation for a minister is supposed to be different from a believer Remember that you people said that thing. the rules of, of purity for a minister had the same rules for a believer. Simple. They are thou shalt not see scriptures. And I've explained here that the God who said thou shalt not knows that you are an emotional being. You have a soul. Just like you have a body and you have a spirit you have the three of them and you are the three of them so you are put together as a composite your soul you cannot genuinely love a lady and not be emotionally connected to her are you with me when you get married you will need it even before marriage you will need it why you were giving to your wife even though you were not earning big it's because you are emotionally connected to her that's how you why you meet her needs that you can have hungry stomach and still give her money so god knows but he still says thou shall not we can decide to attempt that question like they do in youth meeting at a rush and say do this do this do this but you see your emotional expressions in a relationship with a man that you love will be different from grace's own because your frames are different are you with me so you will have common rules things that you must not do you don't need to come into evil if you understand an appearance of evil because that is clear in scriptures that you should flee it If I have a seven year relationship, I wish Papa Oedipo was here. With the Papa Oedipo I know, I know he was not hugging his wife. Maybe not at all. I've seen him hug her since, you know, of recent. But he doesn't even go on a show of affection on stage like Apostle Iren. You understand? Apostle Iren is not afraid to come on stage. And kiss his wife. I can do that thing very well. I don't. It's my wife. Are you with me? But Papa Oedipo is not like that. And he has never told the story that he was like that. So, he meant that within his frame, 
there were instructions that the living spirit inside him gave him that to manage this your frame don't shake hands with her until year five year six you will now um, you cannot tap her shoulder and year seven when you marry you can have your way with her remember the bible says that in the flesh we are subject to laws right our freedom in the spirit is because we subjected ourselves to another legal system and that legal system administers instructions to us based on our frame in idiosyncratic dimensions so every couple or intending couple we need to approach the governor of their relationship to say you know our frame what must we not do so that we will not arrive at that location because what i teach i don't do marriage seminar too many i tell people you have options that are within a legal ground if we are going out maybe imana is going out with them and they hold hands like this to some people their body system has scattered to somebody he will not even remember that he's holding somebody's hand the guy is just going see how he's hold my hand gently now say, oh because their frames sit down sir are different you will need to trust the spirit that's the advantage of being a christian that even if you think i can manage it i can manage a full body hog he will tell you you were not shaped like that don't are you with me so uh, i want to advise that person i carry other person subject your unions to the lord let him start them let him be the one that makes you like who you like there's a sub there are two subjects i told you because i've been having dreams 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 at about 2 a.m yesterday i started studying on dream consecration and interpretation i want to teach this as a subject to help the plenty people that are speaking to me there's another one i was brushing my teeth again this afternoon and the lord said i want you to labor into the knowledge of what we call soul consecration after you have been saved the second layer that presses you into the christ is that jesus takes over your soul he becomes lord over your your will your intellect your emotions your subconscious dimension your conscious dimension and your volition all the six compartments of your soul are saying yes to jesus as lord when you allow him to run like that kenny you are your attractedness to a brother will stem from the christ and because he began it you'll be afraid to obey him inside There are lawful things in the expressions of our emotions. Some people, they must not go beyond long phone calls. Say, ah, Grace, we say, Abina, and I miss you. Say, I miss you too. Say, don't worry, you'll be kept. God will keep us. You know those kind of discussions? You are ventilating it. Or you send your picture and it will be a sane one, not a naked one. Are you with me? So you see your picture. All through my youth service, the lady I was in a relationship with in school, because the temptations you service were plenty from fellow coppers from students where i served in the north is a religious hub but i found out that under those long gowns is immorality if you are not under the christ your possibilities are the same religion cannot cure immorality many of our brothers were sleeping with these ladies for free so my first line of defense was my love for Jesus and then in my room I had a big picture on my TV uncle your wife I said yes she's waiting for me at home the screen of my phone was the young lady as a permanent reminder when she calls me I stored her picture with 
the number. So when she calls me, I behold the picture. I do everything to remind me. All of our sisters in NCCF knew the name. They say it's a lie. You are just trying to be free of us. So when we went for NCF National Conference in Jones, I told her to come from Mina. So everybody saw her. Some people beefed her. We didn't even end up getting money. So the beef was not necessary. But other people said to them, ah, now we agree that um, there were two sisters who broke. One of them was six months to marriage. When she heard that, that our relationship broke, she broke you know with the guy. Now you are free. I said, I, I beg you in God's name. <laughs> go back there. Go, go and marry that guy. She ended up marrying the guy. They used to live in the Lord. They've moved from there now. But I had to create lines of defense. There are people who are saved, who have never slept with anybody before. The first person you sleep with is the person that you are married to. Not so. But it's not for everybody. Even though all of us are entering marriage as new. Are you with me? Yes. So, if you have not slept with somebody before, before you came into this ministry and cutting expression you are safer than somebody who has slept to somebody before they came to ministry you have not crossed that bridge so the pleasures cannot 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 trap your soul but if you have gone that way before these three years will be three, three years of torment but the holy spirit is still lord to bring instructions and bring energy supplies to meet the demands of your pre exposure are you getting my point my wife is here you know we got married because of the circumstances of our marriage in the court the Koyi registry i think exactly a month was 30th of october yes and then 30th of november for our church union that last one month was torment you know why? In our minds, we are married. Abina, we have certificate. I'm a pastor. Two weeks to the wedding, I had to call her one day and say, please, be going to a party. Don't stay where I can. Don't stay in Obomosho again. And she understood go to a bad just go to your uncle's house and I'm not going to see you until we show up for the engagement because I knew that my limits had come and the instruction that the Holy Spirit gave me was physical distance and I obeyed and that's what saved me I would not have been able to say this to you if we didn't carry out that instruction I didn't read it in the book the living spirit told me this is how to handle it. Marital or pro-marital relationship, especially in the body of Christ, is not good for people who cannot hear the voice of the shepherd. You will abuse even the best of relationships. What did I tell you this after? I said go back and teach your people how to master hearing God. It's a basic requirement. Because your reality as a sheep, one that is led by the Spirit, will be false if you can't hear him. The first experience of the sheep with the shepherd is what? Is it followership? My sheep? So, if you can't hear him, it means you have, passed, you have missed the first test. The first organic test of sheep. There is a truth called chastity. There is a truth called purity and sexual purity. It's a reality in God. The Bible says when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into it. That's how our fathers survived. They didn't know the many things that we knew, but they couldn't cross boundaries because there was a voice. At every junction they were going to stray that said to them, this is the way, walk in it. And they walked. That's why many of them tell stories of no contamination. So that's my advice for this person. 